On Monday, November 12th, Swan Auction Galleries will be conducting our annual auction of rare and important travel posters. This year, the auction consists of 146 different images from all around the globe. We've organized the auction around certain themes. We have posters of ocean liners. We have posters of trains. We have posters of planes. We have posters from America, posters from England, posters from all around Europe, even posters from as far away as India and the Far East. Within the collection, you'll see images of zeppelins, of bridges, of polar bears, of architecture, even a poster from Disneyland. It really is a worldwide survey of all that one can find in this great world of ours. Having been in the poster industry for over 10 years, it's amazing to me that there are still images that I've never seen before. And I'm delighted when I can share these images with fellow poster enthusiasts. And within this auction, there are several images that I've never seen before, but three that I'd really like to bring to your attention. The first one is lot number 40, the Swedish shipping line by the very famous poster artist Henry Hudson Rodmel. And it seems like some sort of self-fulfilling prophecy that somebody with the name of Henry Hudson would actually spend so much of his life designing shipping posters. This is a great Art Deco image of the front of a ship. Certainly has shades of work of Cassandra, whose front-on view of the Normandy became an icon of Art Deco design. We see an element of that here, the way the ship is seen almost head-on. It's augmented by the image of the buildings on the hill. The blue and the yellow color scheme, which by the way are the Swedish flag, are not only a good part of the design, but help tie the whole picture into the nationality of the company being advertised. Given that this poster is advertising a Swedish shipping line, and it's advertising transportation between England and Sweden, you might find yourself asking, well, why is the poster in French? It's a great question, and the reason is that these shipping companies, whether they were German shipping companies or French companies or Swedish shipping companies, advertised in many different nations, and clearly this was the French version of this poster that would have appeared in French markets, which means, even though I've never seen it before, I can safely assume that there would have been a Swedish version, an English version, and most likely even a German version. Another poster I've never seen before is lot number 68, advertising the running of the bulls in Pamplona, Spain. And this is really curious to me because the running of the bulls is such an incredible mythic event romanticized by Hemingway, attended by people from all over the world, and yet I have never seen, not only have I never seen this poster, I've never seen any poster advertising the running of the bulls. Now I imagine in this day and age, were Spain or were Pamplona to advertise running of the bulls, and somebody were to go to Pamplona and get run over by a bull, then in this day and age they could probably sue as a result. Perhaps that explains why there's no contemporary advertising for the event, but it's extraordinary to me that even historically no posters exist depicting the running of the bulls. It is a rather late poster from 1954, uh, but even so, it's so exciting and it's so dramatic and because it's for such an important event, again, it's sort of, it, it's mind-boggling to me that I haven't seen this image or even anything like it in the past. It's a great dramatic angle. You could say it's the bullseye view of what's going on. I suppose the reason we didn't see this image depicted from the front is the artist perhaps didn't want us to see the looks of terror on the men's faces as they scramble down the tiny streets in an attempt to avoid the sharp horns and the thundering hoofs of these mighty animals. This image is so good, this image is so rare, this image does depict such an important event, an event that has really sort of taken hold in the romantic imagination of sort of young men and adventurers around the world. It's a classic Spanish tourist poster and we're delighted to have it in the auction. Another image that I consider absolutely fresh to market, and by this I mean I've never seen it before, is Lot 101 by Ralph Mott. And it's very curious to me in this case because amongst the most highly collected subgroup of posters there are, are golf posters. Golf posters for years have been eagerly sought out by collectors uh, who have usually paid very top dollar for these pieces, and it's just so surprising to me that not only a golf image, but such a good golf image could really never before have been seen. And for all the research I did, I couldn't turn this image up in any book. Not only that, the artist, Ralph Mott, very little exists on him as well. And we do have three other posters by him in the sale. He was obviously a very talented artist. 
This golf poster is advertising traveling by GWR, which is the Great Western Railway, one of several British rail companies that would take people all over England who were a big proponent of poster advertising and they generated a lot of posters. But this image with the ball, with the club, and with a little tassel on the tee is such a beautiful close-up shot. It's the kind of image, I'm not a golfer, but it's the kind of image that you have to imagine would really get a golfer's poster blood pulsing in his veins. And speaking of golf posters, we do have a lot of other golf posters in the sale, some of which are quite rare. In fact, Lot 102 by Norman Wilkinson, Golf in Northern Ireland, is just one of these pieces. For all of the research that I did, I could only find one other record of this poster having come up for sale before an auction, and that was in 1989, so already almost 20 years ago. So we get an idea of just how rare that poster is, and even though we have seen it before, it's still really one of only a handful of known copies. And that's one of the reasons why the estimate is so high. At seven to $10,000, that's acknowledging that the poster is rare, that the poster is by a very famous artist, that the poster is in fact quite beautiful, and most importantly in the golfing world, that the poster depicts golfing in a famous area or at a famous resort. Because people really want to collect golfing images from the most famous golf courses, as opposed to the lesser known or the less famous courses. Another reason why I really like my job is not just because I get to work with great pieces and not just because I get to see things that I've never seen before, but some of these posters really can teach me and teach us something about history. Let's take a look at Lot 26, Sea India, the Northwest Frontier. This was done sometime in the 1930s. We don't have an exact date, but if we take a look at the image, we see this very romanticized kind of wild view of the Khyber Pass the area in between what is now Pakistan and India. Now, this poster intrigues me on a number of different levels. First of all, during that time, if I were to see this poster and see armed bandits in the hill looking down at a convoy, I'm not really sure why I'd like to take a holiday there. That in and of itself is one question, but more importantly, when you research the poster, you find out that in 1947, India and Pakistan split. This is the world as we know it today, but not that long ago, that part of the world geographically and cartographically looked very different. It was a single country that split in 1947. The area in the Northwest province is now very much in the news as a geopolitical hotspot where some of the world's most renowned terrorists are said to be hiding out. But back in the 1920s, back in the 1930s, that part of the country was so rugged and so wild and so, in many ways, romantic, anybody familiar with the short stories of Rudyard Kipling will recognize this part of the world. In fact, if you've seen the movie The Man Who Would Be King with Sean Connery and Michael Caine, there's a couple of great scenes that take place just in this part of the world where the two protagonists have to come face to face with these sort of wild tribal people who are, you know, who refuse the local culture and make a poster like this so exotic and so educational. Lot number 39 by Adamar Anton is one of the many ocean liner and shipping posters that we have in the sale. And again, the story behind this poster is even better than the great Art Deco image. Here we see the two sister ships, the St. Louis and the Milwaukee, a great Art Deco, colorful rendition of the vessels. But if we do some research into the stories of the ship, we find out what really happened. And behind this wonderful Art Deco facade is really one of the tragic stories of the 20th century. Despite her beautiful Art Deco design, the St. Louis played a very ignominious role in history. When in May of 1939, she took 937 passengers over from Germany on their way to Cuba. The majority of these passengers were Jewish, fleeing the Nazi regime. Due to red tape, the boat was not allowed to dock in Cuba proceeded to America, where she came close enough to Miami so that the passengers could see the lights on shore, and then due to American bureaucratic red tape and hangups, was forced to turn back, go back to Germany, where all of the passengers were discharged. That said, it still is a striking poster, and it reverberates a little bit more when we realize more than just a beautiful image, this ship played a crucial role in an important event in 20th century history.